subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button you're watching candid talk with tahir gora at tag tv today we are talking about atheism is atheism a cult is there any difference between atheism and the hindu civilization concept gnostic and particularly we'll also talk about ex muslims atheism do they believe in just kind of uh, mocking gods allah and uh, do they have any world view as well or just mocking religions do they believe in dialogue do they believe in philosophical discussions so i am joined with sanjay dixit from jaipur a renowned author intellectual and center figure around jaipur dialogue welcome sanjay bhai how are you i am good thank you for having me so it's a very delicate issue uh, i would like to know and my viewers would like to know as well that is atheism a cult kind of a how do you see the scenario actually the way it is shaping up in the west and especially in this uh, as you mentioned the ex muslim category it is more of a cult uh, why I'll, i'll i'll try and tell you why it is a cult because these people they actually call islam a cult and uh, they give good reasons they try and rationalize it that it is a blind belief okay that's fine so you come to a conclusion that uh, there is no real evidence for the kind of god that uh, abrahamism in general and uh, islam in particular professes okay that's fine that that is a rational position but i do not understand when you come to a conclusion that there is no god how is that a rational position and not just you come to a conclusion that there is no god you also start abusing others who may hold a other belief or who may even be what is called in a position of agnosticism or who may be open minded who may be simply seekers and not believers so these people what they do is that they simply move from one set of belief to another set of belief and when you are moving from belief to belief you are moving from one set of irrationality to another set of irrationality because to be called rational you have to go through the scientific methodology and what is the scientific methodology scientific methodology is not calling other people names the scientific methodology is that you investigate that you try and find out you have a position that you use the four scientific methods of proving universality you in using verifiability then repeatability and finally you should have an open position of what is called falsifiability if these four position are not there then your position is not rational and all these uh, uh, so called ex muslim atheists they have moved away from one position assumed another position assumed that to be absolutely correct and they have started abusing all and sundry and the funny thing is that okay they abuse islam as being unscientific irrational or whatever uh, today uh, i read a tweet uh, by nicholas nasim talib and uh, he said something very interesting he said that the problem of modernity is that uh, science ought to be um, uh, literal and religion ought to be metaphorical and our problem in today's modernity is that we take religion to be literal and science to be metaphorical he is absolutely correct but uh, when these uh, ex muslims they start abusing uh, sanatan dharma uh, the okay we 
call it Hinduism for simplicity. The problem is that Hinduism is the only one in which religion is metaphorical. All the scriptures are taken metaphorically because the fundamental principle in Sanatan Dharma, also called as Hinduism, is that there is no text without a context. That is the very essence of Sanatan Dharma. There is no text without a context. Not only that, you do not understand the fundamental differences within the logic systems. The two-valued logic which is used in Abrahamism where uh, the final proof lies in the book, that doesn't exist in Sanatan Dharma, where direct evidence is the highest praman or the proof. The epistemology that is used there is that there are six kind of different pramanas or proofs. And logic is multi-valued in the sense that uh, it's not just true and false, right and wrong. There's always a gray area in between. In fact, more than a gray area in between. In fact, the most commonly used logic that is called Chatushkoti in both Sanatana Dharma and Buddhism. It has four positions. That is false. The second is neither false nor true. It is called Sanshe. Then the third position is both true and false. That is called Shraddha. Sometimes Shraddha is also mistaken as belief. Shraddha is not belief. Shraddha is that position where you are considering the possibility of something being more true than false. That is that position. And the fourth is that position of realization. Whether you get that uh, experiential knowledge by which you actually come to real knowledge or the truth. So that being the position of uh, Hinduism, it is probably the most rational, the most scientific, also the most scientific because it is the only one that allows you to falsify it. You are free to try and refute any principle of Hinduism. Nobody is going to take offense. But of course, if you're going to abuse and you try and be wicked towards it, then this is also uh, our uh, settled principle. It is called Shathe Shatham Samacharit, that is be wicked to the wicked. That is why in one of the tweets I have written that he is absolutely right in abusing you. If you are abusing somebody, then uh, that, you know, I do not agree with the Gandhian principle because I always have regarded that uh, <clears throat> Gandhi came from a very, very Tolstoy. Uh, uh, he was more a follower of Tolstoy than of Gita. And uh, Tolstoy in his later life became uh, too much of a romantic. But even Tolstoy, when he discusses, if you read the epilogue of the war and peace, even there, his fundamental reasoning of uh, what is called reason and consciousness and uh, 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 what is called free will and necessity, they're again too valued. They're either free will or there is necessity. There is either reason or there is consciousness. So Tolstoy was too valued. Gandhi also became too valued. His Idols were not Krishna, Rama and Krishna, though he talked about Ram Raj and he talked about Gita. But his basic ideals came from three. That was uh, uh, Thoreau, uh, John Ruskin and Tolstoy. That's why Sri Aurobindo once said that uh, Gandhi is a Russian Christian in an Indian body. So when people like Armin Nawabi say that I follow Gandhi, what do you know about Gandhi? You don't know Gandhi's Gandhian philosophy. We don't agree with his concept of Ahinsa because that is not the concept of Ahinsa that is available in the Indian scriptures, in the Shastras or even in practical wisdom. Ahinsa is defined by Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. That is the last chapter, the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. I'll read it, I'll, I'll, I'll recite it in Sanskrit and then, then I will translate it. It says, Yasya nahan krito bhavo buddhir yasya na lipyate hatva sa iman lokan nahanti na nibadhyate That means, one who doesn't have the ego about hurting anyone, that uh, he is uh, not hurting anyone out of some vengeance. He doesn't have the ego and he is not mentally involved in it. 
then in such a situation if he kills anyone for dharma so he is neither killing nor does he suffer the karma for it so this is the concept of ahimsa in the indian scriptures you can, yes, these are the three fundamental scriptures you know they are called prasthana trayi uh, the upanishads the vedas sorry the upanishads the brahma sutras and the bhagavad gita i have seen no evidence of their being able to understand the four valued logic the time concepts of uh, sanatan dharma <clears throat> the epistemology let's take the position of nastik because that's the original question you asked nastik is often translated as atheism atheist but uh, in the indian pantheon nastik is an epistemic position that is what are the proofs that you are accepting and uh, even buddhism it by the uh, traditional sanatan dharma treats buddhism as nastik they treat jainism as nastik they treat charvaka as nastik and uh, at a very exalted level many people treat even upanishads as nastik the upanishads never deny the authority of the vedas so basically the nastik position is that there are six levels of proofs uh, i am not uh, going to uh, detail them out it may be complicated for the listeners but uh, the first and the foremost praman or the evidence in all indian scriptures in the all indian uh, system is direct evidence and the scriptural evidence ranks last and scriptural evidence according to sanatan dharma is the authority of the vedas now the epistemic position of buddhism is that okay they do not accept the authority of the vedas so they are called nastik that is the meaning of the nastik or the extreme the charvakas the, the charvakas who are normally in common parlance they are the ones who are called nastik okay they do not believe in god okay of course you must be very careful when using the term belief in sanatan dharma there is no belief in sanatan dharma as such at the higher levels that belief comes only because you are allowed many paths and one of the paths especially for the common people is the bhakti mark so in bhakti mark you are allowed to believe because it is uh, the medium of that is your manas or your emotional mind so when you are using your emotional mind the uh, limit of the emotional minds are limitless it's beyond limits you can have any flight of fancy it's allowed it's perfectly allowed similarly when you are using your intellect then it becomes more difficult because intellect is limited and so the gyan mark the path of knowledge that the medium is intellect uh, then you use the logic to gain knowledge that becomes more difficult because it is extremely limited and the third of course the highest is the yogic mark in which you use uh, what is called the higher consciousness and uh, you actually go and experience the reality that is what the yogic mark is that is the most difficult so the sanatan dharma is conscious that everybody's faculties are not the same it recognizes that plurality and because it recognizes that plurality it allows all the paths to coexist now i unless you have understand the basics of uh, the, the multi valued logic and uh, unless you understand what is epistemology that is followed by the indic religions i call them religions for want of a better word and for your western audience they are not really religions they are called dharmic paths so for the dharmikas these are all epistemic positions okay i accept like buddha accepts 3 out of 6 says that i accept only the what is called the pratyaksha praman the um, anuman and the upaman that is the direct evidence the inference and the analogy 
these are the only three that i accept i do not accept the authority of the vedas that is an epistemic position still is called nastik charvaka says that i accept only direct evidence fair enough but all of them are accepted because of the beauty in the indian system that uh, it is a all paths valid kind of a scenario here here is a tweet uh, western style atheism is shallow it just replaces one kind of exclusive wisdom and hate with another kind of exclusivism and hate it is rooted in the same two valued logic that is the hallmark of abrahamism nastik in indian tradition is an epistemological position not a belief second tweet uh, uh, from sanjay bhai in this tweet uh, sanjay dixit responded to harris sultan harris sultan wrote this is what happens when you draw your morals from mythologies the hindu jihadi is saying he doesn't follow gandhi's ideology a real man but he would rather follow the principles of ram and krishna uh, fictitious characters who kill their opponents hindu muslim united my god okay so sanjay dixit uh, responded you just shifted from one kind of exclusivism and hate to another kind of exclusivism and hate those who draw their morals from books or ideologies cannot understand the sweep that sanatana dharm possesses try multi value logics kindergarten kid trying to explain phd thesis strong response and in another tweet uh, sanjay dixit ji uh, answer to uh, nasim nicholas talib uh, he wrote that much of the problems of modernity is taking religion literally and science metaphorically rather than the reverse and sanjay dixit uh, responded correctly stated you might add that those who take religion literally uh, viciously attack the only faith that does treat is scriptures metaphorically so the thing is uh, sanjay bhai personally i accept their freedom of expression uh, they can mock whatever they want who cares honestly they want to tear uh, you know quran's pages is up to them uh, we do have freedom of expression here in uh, canada and in the western world that's fine but the thing what you mention their shallowness appears very prominently overwhelmingly rather as one of the so, uh, so called ex muslim said that mythologies hindu muslim unity needed and all these kind of in, in that i like to know from those people why can't they have any world view about other big issues for instance do you think they are trapped in that western cult atheism kind of a thing yes exactly i mean you are absolutely right they have moved they have simply moved from cult to cult so uh, i have no respect for people who just left one cult for another cult if they had actually broadened their world view they had looked at things in real rational perspective you know not richard dawkins kind of uh, rationalism who even manages to award somebody like javed akhtar I mean, what can be more hilarious he might think that he is really honored some intellectual but we in india we know uh, what kind of thing is done and anybody who had any respect for richard dawkins simply evaporated so they are obviously making a fool of themselves and if they think they're impressing anybody and uh, all the people who probably had some uh, uh, respect for their courage they simply gone away because uh, they have appeared to be completely shallow it is very clear that they are not seekers they are simply moving from one belief to another belief i mean just imagine you have no idea of uh, the divine feminine in the sanatan dharma what divine feminine is it is a very sacred concept and uh, the divine feminine is actually the it is the union of shiva and shakti 
that is the basis of creation. There can be no creation in Sanatan Dharma without the divine feminine. It is not like the Abrahamic religions where there is just one male god and he has all the powers and he can do creation, he can do destruction. The time exists only for him. He makes time. Its time is it flows linearly. And then there is a uh, what is called <clears throat> a last judgment day where time stops. So all those kind of and when you look at them rationally, when you try to look at them scientifically, then they do not conform to scientific standards. But why don't you try that same scientific standard? With Hinduism, where you have all the freedom to try it, there you don't do it. There you assume some kind of a grandstanding position. And from that, you start doing that grandstanding and you start preaching morals from a high pulpit. You expose your shallowness. That uh, for your, uh, what is called, of course, you do not believe in God. But uh, whatever, for your atheism's sake, grow up. That's what I say. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sanjay Bhai. Uh, we would love to have uh, one of them sometime. Uh, and uh, we would uh, request you again so that we could have more dynamic talks so that uh, our viewers could understand uh, both perspectives. In my humble opinion, the other side of perspective uh, is actually not a perspective. Please, no, I'll just <laughs> add one thing. Say, say something. I'll, I'll just add one thing. That you can abuse no issues. Yes. But then do not call yourself rationalist. Because if you say you are a rationalist, and then you start abusing something without even attempting to understand it. And you're probably giving us the impression, us Hindus, you're giving us the impression that you simply don't have the faculties to understand. And that is actually true with most of the Western scholars there. And most of the Western scholars are simply not able to come out of their, that uh, uh, two-valued situation. The two-valued logic predominates everywhere. In fact, it was prevalent even in science till relativity and quantum physics came. And it is only after quantum physics that they started regarding when they said something like that quantum physics means that the universe is basically what they called, you know, in, uh, in science, that uh, superposition of uh, what is called improbability waves. So uh, even today, 99% of people do not understand what quantum physics people are talking about. So in similar way, I would say 99% of the West doesn't understand what Sanatan Dharma is all about. It has fundamentals. I have explained to you. I wrote this book, a little booklet, actually not exactly a book. This book, uh, this booklet. It's, it is, all it is religions titled, are not the same. All religions are not the same. And there I have differentiated all the religions where Sanatan Dharma also, you know, for felicity, because otherwise it causes confusion. And, um, and otherwise, we Hindus do not even consider Sanatan Dharma as a religion, because that religion is a dogma, basically. And uh, we are not a dogma. We've got such flexibility, such great flexibility, and to uh, rationalize in every manner, to debate in every manner, to question in every manner, uh, the Vedas themselves start with Nasadiya Sukta, which is actually a question, you know, that somebody can read Nasadiya Sukta and see what kind of wonderful flight of uh, rationality that is, where it, it questions everything, who came first, gods came first, or the humans who came first, and whether it was necessary to invent God, and all those kind of things are being asked. So would you call Vedas also um, atheists. So, and Vedas have an outer meaning and Vedas have an inner meaning. And those inner meanings are available only to those who seek. It is not available to these superficial observers like these people. And we have these differences, time concepts, cyclical time concept versus linear time concept, the logic concepts, the two-valued binary logic, versus multi-valued logic, then uh, the, uh, what is called <coughs> the binary 
proof system that is you have only one proof we have six proofs and direct evidence is the highest proof here the mm, only proof is the scriptural proof anything else is blasphemy you know that <laughs> and uh, the cosmology here is infinite and in uh, western religions uh, middle eastern western religions it is finite eschatology eschatology that is the um, mm, what is called the uh, death theory in in uh, sanatan dharma it is on the basis of karma you are autonomous in the western religions everything depends on your god he loves it he doesn't live it in a sense sanatan dharma and its offshoots are basically anthropocentric they are looking inwards they are anthropocentric whereas the middle eastern western religions or rather the middle eastern religions basically they are theocentric they have a god which they created and then they got made that god the creator and everything is uh, obsessing about that god uh, unless you understand these fundamental differences i think it is better to refrain uh, from commenting on these things you comment you have the freedom to comment then we'll make a fool of you we'll expose you we'll and if you abuse then we have full freedom to abuse you back you cannot complain if you have abused somebody abuses you back it is his freedom of expression versus your freedom of expression why do you then complain why do you call others bigots if you show bigotry be prepared to take bigotry as simple as that thank you very much sanjeev bhai with this uh, note uh, i am really fascinated with the title of your book uh, all religions are not same probably and definitely all cultures are not same uh, as well so uh, the issue is all religions are not equal we can say all cultures are not equal and the people who come from certain religion and certain uh, culture and reclaim some other position but that baggage that heritage is with them thank you once again sanjay bhai uh, being um, in our show subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button